You seated yourselves and called for a stein of the finest mead. Your partner, Rani, is in a particularly good mood. Quaffing the bar's spirits buoyed your spirits. When things are lively, Rani will recount a certain tale. You were an adventurer, just starting out, and didn't know right from left. It was then that you first met. Shall I open that door for you? The rogue Rani inquired, after appearing from out of nowhere. He thought that it would be a simple matter to take advantage of your naivete and pocket some coin. I got it! Simple! Since that point, you've been journeying under mutually beneficial terms. You handle combat, and Rani handles locks. Hello and welcome everyone to, well, French Bread Plays Dragon's Crown, I guess. Um, <laughs> it felt just a little bit disingenuous to have Dragon's Crown as my channel art and not have a series up for it. And I've been really wanting to replay Dragon's Crown lately anyway, so here we are. Um, it's going to be uh, more of a bite-sized series akin to how... Uh, Momodora is. It's gonna be. Let's see. There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, it's basically gonna be me playing through solo with the Amazon. We're going to try and make it interesting for ourselves by avoiding any NPC or player allies. Uh, as far as choosing the character, no real. Uh, deep thought went into it. Amazon is just the first character I picked up when I played Odin Sphere, and uh, the one I've ended up enjoying the most. So it's been a while, but hopefully I don't make too much of a fool of myself. You came to Hydland as an adventurer. Like many of your fellows, you strove to challenge the dangerous labyrinths here. The labyrinths were every bit as perilous as you'd heard. Most were lucky to even have their bones exit the ruins. You don't currently belong to the guild. I recommend registering. You can get jobs there and learn skills. <laughs> it's very curious who this narrator is supposed to be. Maybe an elder... An elder Randy or something somewhere down the line. Anyway, what we'll be doing is kind of a basic uh, idea of how this is going to play out. Is I think I'll basically do a stage for each episode, um, just for leveling purposes. We're want, we're going to want to do these side quests, but I think I won't include those as part of the main series. Um, just because a side quest involves going through the exact same stage again, um, just with a minorly different objective in hand. Uh, very important for leveling, but not really a whole lot new for a viewer to see. Um, I'll probably include it like on a side series for anyone who really wants to see or wants to make sure I do everything I'm saying I'm doing uh, the way I'm saying I'm going to do it. But, and it, I think... Um, I think at the beginning of every like following episode, I'll read kind of the quest lore, uh, flavor, whatever that you get for achieving the quest, and the of course the art reward you get as well. But hey, we are already using up some time for the intro here, so let's get to it. Clad in full armor, the guildmaster Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the guild hall like a statue. He appraises you with a look and dismissively states that only worthless adventurers leave their equipment in disrepair. Your travels thus far have left your equipment positively thrashed. You resolve to rectify that before returning. The Guildmaster directs you to Morgan's Magic Item Shop. The magician is even able to repair magical equipment. 
So I bet you guys are already seeing one reason why Dragon's Crown is one of my to be favorite games. By the Adventurers Guild, you Ugh. must first repair your broken equipment. We may or may not have to turn off the narrator just so he won't interrupt me. I'm sure you can already see why Dragon's Crown is one of my favorite games of the uh, the PS3 era. No response from this chick. <laughs> just from the art style and sprite quality alone. It, oh, did, or uh, vanillaware standard, right? You conquer a labyrinthine set of stairs, and Morgan Lisley, shopkeeper and witch, welcomes you to her establishment. There is no object's repair which does not fall under her purview, from ornate magic staves to rusted axes. May I help you? Which so it wants us to repair want? our equipment. Easily done. Adventurers come here not only for repairs, but for appraisals and to purchase magic items. You will visit Morgan often. Ah, uh, yes we will. <laughs> Your equipment not just because is now she's easy unmarred. on the eyes. You should return to the guild and see if the guildmaster deems you worthy. Sure enough. Once again, the guildmaster Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the guild hall like a statue. With your equipment now in tip-top condition, you request to join the guild. Samuel issues you a test of skill. What will you do? So we get these very minor um, selections, options, or whatever. They don't really... Well, they don't make really any difference whatsoever to how things play out for the most part. But I think it's kind of a tip of the hat uh, from George Kamatami, kind of like the lead director and art designer for this game to his days back when he worked for geez, Capcom? Yeah, Capcom to make the uh, the D&D side-scrolling beat-em-up games. What was it? Shadows over Mistara or something along those lines? No, I think test those games. Is to help a warrior named Roland. Samuel says that you can find him in the ancient temple ruins. I think those games actually, um, he's gonna talk again. <laughs> I think those dun or Dungeons and Dragon games actually do a little bit better job than Dragon's Crown of simulating this idea of being on a D&D adventure, but as far as gameplay goes, mm, Dragon's Crown is king. To prove your mettle for the Guildmaster, you head to the ancient temple ruins to assist the warrior, Roland. Yeah. I really like the idea. A magic gate oh. was recently found in the ruins on the outskirts of town. Use that to reach your destination. Are you done? <laughs> Jesus. I really like the idea of the narrator. Um, it kind of enhances that D&D &D Dungeon Master-esque uh, feeling. But, good God, it can be hard to get my voice in edgewise sometimes with him. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple. Some quiescent, some Enemies. far less so. An ancient dragon spoken of in the myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one night. You liberated a fairy that was trapped in a cage. Oh my. So you can see um, this cursor moving across the screen. I'm using, I'm doing that with the uh, right uh, analog stick. It's my turn. There's a weird little feature in this no. game where you can yeah. pan your. Thank you. <laughs> you can pan your uh, this cursor across the screen and use it not just to direct Randy uh, towards uh, treasure chests or locked doors. You can also use it to pan over the environment and discover like little shiny secret spots that once you pass over them, they will you have drop a bit of treasure. To Roland. At the guild's behest, he is looking for adventurers who went missing in the ruins. <laughs> Roland's belt looks about as constipated as he does. For you to pass your guild exam, you must help him. Roland tells you to search in the ruins that are submerged in water 
Much time has passed since the missing were last seen. He tells you to bring back their bones if they are found dead. Pretty sure that's how we'll find them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that statue would <laughs> cause a little bit of damage when it fell over. These pillars definitely will. As you can see with poor Randy there. Quite a bit of damage, actually. And now you're starting to see there some of the shine mechanic. That's what I'm going to call it, shine mechanic. Since we are observant and, you know, may have, maybe have also played this game before, the saw that door in the background. Whoa, I thought I dodged. Well now, interesting. Interesting. Looks like... Looks like I'm going to have to um, play a little bit more carefully than I'm used to. Uh, in addition to having not really played too much recently, uh, I haven't played solo in a long time either. Now you can see we get these food stocks and as when we stop moving we can start eating the food it's and I believe turn. we saw in the tutorial that our maximum oh, yeah. we get like a maximum of 150 uh, percent of our current uh, max HP by eating food Let's see. so it doesn't just heal you it gives you kind of a temporary Done. above maximum bonus which is highly useful <laughs> More useful than a flamethrower, anyway. We're gonna skip on that, thank you. Gecko. Now, it might seem a bit pedantic to, I suppose, pan all over the map trying to find uh, different bits of uh, treasure here and there, but treasure doesn't just translate to money, it also translates to experience. Experience, or at least it will yes. in short order oh, so yeah. we want to make a habit of picking up all the treasure we can yeah. I'm not too sure about is if we leave treasure alone for a certain amount of time Randy's just gonna go and pick it up on his own so and I don't know if that I don't know if treasure he picks up doesn't count for our own score if you know what I mean if like money we let him pick up is money Enemies. truly lost or or not not completely sure I'm sure they can actually do some due diligence due, due diligence at some point to figure that out as you can see proceeds uh Pretty much as you would expect a side-scrolling game to proceed. You have found the bones of a missing adventurer. <laughs> Sometimes the dead have been known to leave behind a message right before they perish. We'll collect the bones. It's part of our quest here. And as also... you investigate the wall painting, you detect that the area behind the wall has been hollowed out. Every now and then you get little secrets like this. And by now you've probably noticed that once I hit an enemy a certain amount of times... Ooh! Treasure jackpot. Uh, get away from this, Randy. Once I hit an enemy a certain oh, number of times, uh, the Amazon starts to get a reddish glow around her. And at which point I believe... Uh, the power of my attacks and the speed of my attacks and my movement increases. That's kind of like the oh, Amazon's nice. entire crux is that she Simple. wants to what? keep on the offensive. She wants to... Um, oof. Wants to combo as much as she can and eventually she's going to want to if possible have a little emphasis on the luck stat because she doesn't, I think, hit as individually hard, per se, as maybe the dwarf or fighter can in certain circumstances. But she starts to attack 
really, really damn fast and in a nice kind of swath of an area. So after a certain point, you're getting so many attacks what? in that it really helps to have high luck so you can get more critical attacks since you're attacking so much more often than most characters will. If that makes any sense to you, dear viewer. What I need to remember, and what I think is happening, is that if I get hit, I think I lose my... Oh shit, here's the boss already. I think I lose my Berserk charge. That's what it is, by the way. Is this? Yeah, that hurts her decently. So we got different. We got certain attacks that can cause us to drop our weapon. Uh, in this case, it was the power, power slam. Oops. And you know, it's a powerful attack, but we're left without our weapon for a while. We're not. We're not. Ah, fuck. You pay attention. We're not helpless by any means, but we're not going to do as much damage as, of course, if we have our weapon. Cool, coolest rendition of a harpy I think that I've ever seen. I mean, it's not a not a beloved enemy type for me, but this one's definitely quite neat. But not very hard either. Ilo easily conquered it. There seem to be more nests similar to this one spread throughout the area. You exit the area taking care to avoid drawing the attention of any other harpies. And there's a little bit of flavor text just to give us a little bit of um, context for being able to return to this stage multiple times. There's always going to be more harpies, basically. Got one solid level out of that. And here's the best screen in the game. The spoil screen. So here we get introduced to kind of an interesting mechanic of it's almost kind of like a gambling mechanic because you can see there's a price to appraise our items and then there's the price that they can be sold for and I'm going to appraise this axe just to give an example but press X to appraise and we see that the actual cost of the axe or the actual value of the axe is 150 gold. So we spent more money to appraise it than we were able to get out of uh, selling it. Let's do it again for this other one. Uh, 185 to appraise. We can currently just forsake that, any chance of finding out what it is, and just simply sell it on appraised, get 74 gold, but let's try our luck. So we once again lose money on both of these they're both pretty crap uh, um, I'll take one of them just in case it's better than what I have but yeah not very good items typically typically I don't really like to appraise any item with a rank beneath C at least this early in the game later on I'll get even more finicky but we don't have anything yet so doesn't necessarily hurt to appraise uh, things below that ranking. Stun time reduced by 10. That's a pretty good uh, benefit. And as its base defense of 2. Boots. 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 These boots we probably don't want. Uh, we can glean some information from the item even before it is appraised. Like we can see the defense value. There's one question mark. At least in the early game, we know one question mark means it can only it cannot be a value any higher than ten, or rather than nine. Um, but we can also see underneath the category, there's a little line, and then there's a series of question marks. That means that this item has a unique effect attached to it. So I decided to uh, appraise this because it had a unique effect. This one, I'm not even going to bother. And this is for the fighter only. These are for the caster guys only. So the rest, we're just going to sell and quit. We should actually not really have any major money problems in this playthrough since we are going completely solo. You have fulfilled the request. 
Report your work to the Guildmaster. Alrighty. So you can see our equipment screen. These are the leather boots we had before. Smothering leather boots have absolutely no defense advantage, but a little bit of fire resistance, so fine. And we can put on this unbroken force amulet to get a little more defense, a little bit of stun protection, I guess. Let's hustle down over, talk to Samuel Joseph. You return to the guild to report your quest. However, Samuel gives you an additional task. It is possible to resurrect the dead with their bones. He tells you to go to the temple to attempt the resurrection ritual. Canaan Temple is a temple dedicated to the worship of the goddess Althena. Proceed there immediately. What a fucking world this is, right? <laughs> you were ordered to attempt to resurrect guild members at Canaan Temple. Now, <laughs> granted it says attempt to resurrect, but being able to walk down the street to the local church and, you know, maybe resurrect the dead is a massive, <laughs> like, massive situation here. Um, I can't imagine in a world where the church could actually accomplish something like this. As you enter, they wouldn't have considerable power. The back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. That is the most intense, like, reliquary I've ever seen around this monk's neck, by the way. Gotta respect. The prayer of the monks sometimes restores the dead to life. The goddess bestows mercy to those whose time has not yet come. Wandering one, how well, can I help how very you? kind. We've got Eddie and Obed. <laughs> Both of them are worthless to me, so we'll just go with Obed. Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is made new. The adventurer pledges their allegiance to you as thanks. So this is basically just their Any way of. adventurers you resurrect will wait okay. for you at the inn. You can now fill out your party with please yeah, be yeah, aware yeah. that if you if you encounter yeah 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 we don't we don't care about this because we're never going to have anybody. Um, turn off join. We're just not interested in that. Uh, basically, it's the game's way of letting you. Even your odds if you're not playing with friends. If you don't have friends, you can't play online, you're in that set of situation, or you're a bored Let's Player, um, you can use these NPCs to help you out. We're going to do our best to avoid that. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. We shall indeed. All right, so here we get our pittance reward. After delivering your report, you think you see part of a smile cross Samuel's face. You are now registered with the guild. You may now get cooperation from guild members. They may participate in your party and help you in completing quests. The Adventurer's Guild has a backlog of quests because many adventurers are occupied with the Dragon's Crown rumors. The king and his retinue left to find the Dragon's Crown and are missing. Many guild members are now searching for them. The existence of this crown that supposedly controls dragons is disputed, but the king was obsessed with finding it. Samuel hurriedly assigns you a new task. You get the feeling that he deems you reliable and trustworthy. It's a request from this country's Prime Minister. The quest's details will be provided at the castle. You wonder about the lives of the powerful people in that grand castle. You happily accept the job. <laughs> not, much, not much choice in the matter. Welcome back. But hey. You have a request. Now we've got quests. These are the quests I was talking about previously that 
I will largely be doing off screen for the main playthrough here, but you should be able to check out in probably like a side playlist or some shit whenever I get around to it. But we will describe the quest, and in the beginning of the next episode, we will look at the reward screen for it. But the quest is to help the honey buzzards. We've seen a dramatic increase in the wasp population in recent days. Some of our top scholars believe that this wasp explosion is due to the decline of the honey buzzards. The scholars postulate that orcs have taken up residence in the ancient temple ruins and are hunting the buzzards for food. Without the buzzards consuming the wasps, the wasp population is growing unchecked. If their supply chain can be broken, the orcs residing in the ruins will be forced to leave, thus allowing the buzzard population to rebound. Destroying a recent orc shipment in the harbor should be enough to encourage the orcs relocation. So, we go to the ancient temple, we open that door we opened previously, uh, beat up the orcs, and bada bing bada boom, we get some EXP, we get some gold, and we get the all important skill point. And speaking of skill points, let's take a look at what we have available to us. So, every adventure has basically two skill wheels, I guess we'll call them. They have the class specific one for the, in our case, the Amazon, and they have the common skills that any, anybody and everybody can pick up. We have two skill points to work with, so let's check out the Amazon skills first. Stun Wave, an aerial attack which combines a knockdown attack with a shockwave. Brutal Drive, Power Smash, and Shockwaves are strengthened. Berserk. Attack an enemy multiple times consecutively for increased attack power and speed. Adrenaline. Strength increases as HP decreases. Alright, and that's all we have unlocked for the moment. Absolute, automatic, 100% pick here is Berserk. That's our main mechanic. And this skill is just going to be leveled up every single time we have the ability to do so. Over in common, we currently have the ability to increase the chance of taking an enemy down while sliding. Wealth to health, picking up coins recovers HP. That's potentially very useful. Money is power, picking up coins adds to your score. Vitality boost, just a nice bump to our HP. And that's what we have available right now. I am going to do money is power. I'm not sure if that's crazy or not, uh, but it seems to make sense to me. You take these experience buffing skills as soon as you can. I think later you can respec, so it's not even a big deal. Eventually you get those points back. But in the meantime, this will help us level up even quicker than ordinarily possible. Alrighty. I do believe that is a good point for us to end this episode. Uh, like I said, as soon as I end this, I'm going to go complete that quest, run on back, and then we will start up the next episode back in the guild hall and uh, move on from there. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is kind of a more casual series uh, just to show off this game uh, and my appreciation for it. Uh, like most Vanillaware games, I don't think this ever became quite the hit that it probably deserves to be. And there's a lot of controversy when it came out as well, which maybe I'll talk about going forward. But honestly, um, I think it's I think it's amazing. I'd like to build just you know, it's it's a uh, six or three years after the fact, but every little bit to build awareness for this excellent title I think is a noble enough cause and a good enough excuse to do this series. So, until then, till we meet up once more, peace everyone.